Good morning, and here is a video key for Geometry Do Now 13.2. So you might have noticed I introduced some new theorems in some of these Do Nows, and so you should probably read them and assume that they are going to be applied in things in this Do Now. So here we have a couple of theorems uh, referring to something called the transitive property. Now the transitive property is simply something like this. If A equals B and B equals C and then the mind-blowing thing is that A also equals C. And that's really all there is to it uh, for the transitive property. So here we go. Let's read these, make sure we understand them. Um, if angles or segments are congruent to the same angle or segments, the angles or segments are congruent. So if A is congruent to B and B is congruent to C, then what we're saying is A and C are both congruent to the same angle, so they are congruent. Now, we can make this uh, more expansive um, by saying if angles or segments are congruent to congruent angles or segments, then the angles or segments are congruent. So here we might add a third or fourth one where it might say C is congruent to D. Okay, and now we're saying B and C are congruent angles, right? And we know that A is congruent to B, okay? And we know that D is congruent to C. So what that tells us is that A and D are congruent because they're congruent to congruent things. So that's really what these two mean. Um, it's theorem 16 is just more things being congruent. Uh, so it's a little more steps. So here we have <clears throat> this, uh, this situation. So we know that FG is congruent to KJ. So let's mark this up. So FG is congruent to KJ. So I've made a little mark there. We also know that GH is congruent to KJ. Okay, so GH <clears throat> and KJ are congruent. So we know that. We know that FG and KG, KJ are congruent. So what we want to prove is that KG bisects, KG bisects FH, okay? We want to prove that this, this segment here, this whole thing here, bisects uh, FH. Okay, to do that, what we have to prove is that this point G, which is why I circled it, is a midpoint, okay? Okay, so, <clears throat> or we can simply use the definition of, <clears throat> of bisection. So to prove that it bisects, actually, let me back up. To prove that it bisects, we need to prove that um, FG is congruent to GH. Okay, well, we can do that with the transitive property. So what we can next say is FG is congruent to GH, okay, by definition, okay, so because of transitive property, okay, which means that what we're saying is, um, FG is congruent to um, KJ, which is, oh, that's not, that's not a tilde there, okay, okay, which is, con okay, congruent to, um, which one was it, GH, okay, so since KJ is congruent to FG, and it's congruent to GH, then we can we can then say that FG is congruent to GH because they're both congruent to the same angle or the same segment. They're both congruent to the same thing. Then we can go on and have our last line, which is simply that KG 
bisects FH, spell bisects correctly, by definition of a bisector, that's a segment into congruent segments. Okay. So there you go on that one. Um, okay. Finish this proof. It only needs two more lines. So let's consider this. We've got angle one plus angle two is 90 degrees. Angle one is congruent to angle three. Okay. So there's a few things we know. We know that this is 90 degrees. We also know that this is congruent to this. Cool. And I do recommend drawing things here. It really helps to draw the information, uh, especially if you're a visual person like me. Um, if you're not, it might not help as much. But we want to prove that angle 3 plus angle 2 equals 90 degrees. <clears throat> so we have these givens. So these two angles are congruent. This plus this equals 90. So this is actually... A little bit of uh, substitution, a little bit of um, transitive, but ultimately what we're doing is the addition property, okay? Um, we're adding the same thing to congruent angles and getting a congruent thing. So um, we can simply say um, one, so... Let me back up for a second. So uh, simply we can prove this by saying that uh, angle one plus angle two is going to be congruent to, well, that's not the congruent symbol, there we go, to angle three plus angle two as well. Okay, and the reason for that is we're adding the same thing to congruent angles. Addition, adding, let's see here. What's going on here? Ah, that's the problem. Addition, adding the same angle to congruent angles produces a congruent sum. Okay. And since we're getting congruent sums, you know, we, you know, congruent sums, we can now say uh, angle three plus angle two equals 90 degrees because it is a congruent sum with angle one plus angle two. Okay, and then let's take a look at number three. So here we have angle one is congruent to angle two. So I'm going to mark that up. So here we have angle one, I'll make a little hash mark there, is congruent to angle two. We're also told that angle three and angle two are congruent. Okay, so now I've marked it up, and it should be obvious that they're all congruent uh, based on this. So we want to conclude that angle one is congruent to angle three. So we've got the two givens, so state the two givens, okay? And then go on and talk about uh, how we get to the conclusion. Um, and it's, it's simply angle one is congruent to angle three because angle one and angle three are congruent to angle two and the transitive property uh, states that if two angles are congruent to the same angle that they are also congruent to each other and this is uh, theorem 15 by the way, it's often useful to make a note of that. 
so you know, and you can go on back and take a look at that. All right, I hope this has helped, and I'm going to stop.